thanks to all the people that make possible to have me here. It was a long way from uh, flying from home. Maybe I'm the I'm the one that uh, fly the most this time from all of us. So I just want to thank uh, everyone. Thanks Anutin, thanks uh, Anne, and thanks Boom for being in touch and putting all all the things together for having me here. Uh, sorry. Um, as one mentioned, I'm, I, I've been a uh, type designer with commercial type uh, since uh, 2013, so it's been already six years uh, working with them. Um, I've been working in, uh, in many, many projects, many typefaces, but uh, the one I want to show, I think that's um, the one I have this uh, deep love. And I think it's just because of, of the whole story about it. So I'm going to try to share this and put it in words. Um, this first slide, um, I think uh, is going to be explained once I go through, through the presentation. Uh, so first thing, uh, in commercial, we, we work uh, for clients. Uh, so we do custom projects. Uh, we do retail uh, funds for uh, for our website to sell through through the website, and then um, one one of the nicest part of working with them, everything is nice, but this part is I think the nicest is that uh, we have one day for personal projects, so we basically we are free to to decide what we want to do. And the idea is that this uh, project is going to be released through commercial. So we need to start uh, thinking about uh, what we want to do. So basically, it's like to build our own brief about what we want to do. Um, I've been always uh, in love with Caslon. Um, I don't want to talk too much about this because maybe a lot of you know more about, about this. but. Um, it's been a misconception about uh, what is Caslon because we always think on one name and we think that everything that was done by Caslon was done just one by one person. But uh, Caslon was a foundry, so and it was a family that went through many many years. But um, the thing that I like and I was always in love was with. Caslon All Face that was done by William Caslon the first. Um, this type is, this type was inspired by the Dutch types uh, from the Baroque uh, period, and they were basically uh, the type that was used um, in England until until Caslon designed his first typeface. Uh, also, his design was. Um, uh, his design influenced uh, John Baskerville later. Um, what I uh, what I really like um, from Caslon, uh, from the old old style uh, Caslon, uh, it was the big sizes. So this is actually um, the size that I love that, that I love most, and that was that was the inspira inspiration for Canela. Um, uh, this is the French canon. Uh, I there was no 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 many um, digital uh, revivals uh, of those sizes until Matthew Carter uh, did his uh, big Caslon. But before that, there were uh, some other interpretations. Um, Caslon became like super popular. Uh, and it was used uh, for really long time. Even uh, the declaration of independence from United States was uh, set in Caslon. And uh, as I mentioned, it was widely used that uh, in some point, because it was so popular, this expression uh, appeared when you are in doubt, just choose Caslon. So it's always safe. Uh, I started making some research 
about um, what was done in digital. And I choose uh, three different uh, versions. The first one, is, it was uh, ITC Caslon from Ed Benget in 1983. Uh, you will see a comparison of them later. Uh, I choose also Adobe Caslon from Caron Tombly, done in the 90s. Uh, then um, Big Caslon from Matthew Carter. So you can see the three of them, they have different approaches. And also it's because of the reference that they were used were completely different. Uh, there is a, a theory that uh, the biggest sizes of Caslon, the ones that I like most, maybe they weren't done by him, maybe they were done by, by somebody else, but um, I don't know uh, more information about it. But the thing uh, see, uh, that you can see here is that all of them, they, they share something. So the first version is the one done by Ed Benguet, uh, big X height, uh, higher contrast uh, between thins and ticks. Um, uh, if you see the, I don't have an example, but if you see the comparison between the weights, uh, it's soft. Uh, the transition is soft from, from going to regular to, to bold. And then the second version is uh, Adobe Caslon that basically it's uh, used for uh, small sizes. And then Big Caslon that uh, is the one that uh, was inspired by the French Canon also and all the big sizes from, uh, from the Caslon foundry. So after this I started making this question like uh, what new interpretation uh, could be found in the model of Caslon all face? My first approach, and uh, this was my first brief, it was um, to make a Caslon version for, for newspapers. So basically I spent um, five months trying to make it work, but it was too difficult to me because um, I think Caslon is one of the typefaces that uh, it's, uh, it doesn't have uh, the same construction as some other typefaces. So it doesn't follow this uh, calligraphic um, uh, construction that normally we are, um, that normally we expect. So it has uh, the contrast in different places that normally they don't happen. So this was difficult for me to approach in, uh, in the new space. So after uh, spending five months uh, and talking with Christian and Paul, they say, okay, why don't you leave it on the side, take some time and start playing with some other ideas and uh, see, see what you get. So I did, I worked in some other ideas, completely different, leave Caslon on the side, but I really wanted to do something inspired uh, by Caslon. So I went back maybe a year later, I think 2015, and I started from the scratch again. And basically what, what I started doing at the beginning was uh, my own revival of the, of the big sizes. Uh, this is the, the first attempt, but then we just started questioning, like, why do you want to do something that it's been done and what you're going to add uh, new? So it was like, maybe I'm just going to waste my time and there is no point of doing this. So, but I still, I still stick to the idea to do something inspired uh, uh, by Caslon. So I stick to this and I start this uh, process uh, of experimentation about uh, what will happen, uh, trying to make this uh, feel more contemporary. So if I go back, you see this, this looks old. Uh, this was starting to look something new maybe changing also the, the proportion because basically I feel that something that Catlin make it look a bit old is the proportions on, on the uppercase. So changing that and changing the way of the serifs and the terminals were done will bring something. But still it was like on the market there were already things that they were looking like this. So it was like, was the idea of doing something kind of similar to somebody else but it's a bit different, but not too different. So 
let's uh, keep with experimentation. So, okay, what will happen if I change the, the shape of the serifs? What will happen if I continue making this exploration? That basically I remember this idea is coming from a, from a book from Tommy Thompson that is called How to Render Roman Letters. And uh, he was showing there with a, a carpenter pencil how to render Caslon. And basically, this is the way of the shapes will will come out from the from the pencil. So this was kind of a good idea. It was looking good. It was looking fresh, but they still like uh, not uh, completely sure about it until it came just to my mind that. Uh, what will happen if Caslon was uh, sans? And uh, I'm not showing that exercise because it was like trash. But from there is when I found this. Like from doing this experimentation is when I found those uh, semi-serifs, no serifs. I didn't find nothing new because you've seen this in other uh, in other typefaces. But the combination of Caslon and uh, and this treatment. It just uh, became in, in Canela. It happened that this process took me like really long time. First, the first five months doing the text, uh, the newspaper phase. Then I think for those process, for this process, it was maybe like three other months. And uh, at that moment, we used to share the the office with a fashion magazine called Document Journal. So I think exactly the same day, or just one day difference, when I finally found this and I print uh, proofs, because we share the space, they they have access to the to the same space. So the art director was just walking around, and I and he saw the the print proofs and say, "What is this?" And I say, "Oh, Miguel is working on this. He just started." I say, "Do you think I can use it for the next issue? It's gonna be out in a month." And they're like, "Whoa." And Christian say, yeah, I think I think we can do it. So basically, that's what uh, that was how Canela happened, and uh, it was a combination of different things. Uh, one, uh, the pressure uh, from Christian and Paul to to make me do something something new, in spite of whatever I wanted to do, but uh, just to push myself to go in 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 direction and to experiment. And the other one was this thing about sharing the office with uh, with document. So basically, I work for the next month uh, full time uh, instead of just working one day uh, per week uh, to try to finish Canela for the next issue because the magazine is just like two issues per year. So basically, it's like a thick book, uh, 600 pages more or less um, uh, about fashion. And uh, this is uh, this is what happened. Uh, same as Frank, no italics for the moment. I think it, it was like that uh, almost for a year, no italics. Um, next thing, uh, we normally work with magazines, and um, they normally approach uh, the studio asking if we have something that hasn't been released that uh, almost anybody else has been using. And uh, it just happened that I was finishing, finally, Canela for releasing, that I was close, maybe still like four months behind, but they were uh, redesigning Traveler. So this is the second time when uh, Canela went out, um, not done yet for the market, but uh, good enough for being in a magazine and. Uh, to work with them, uh, I think it's still no italics the same. So it was like that for uh, maybe a year. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Canela was uh, released in 2016. Um, I think next slide is the one that um, defines the name of my presentation and something I was talking about at the beginning, we think or we believe that Canela is in this ambiguous uh, territory between uh, being sans and being serif, because it's not any of them. And for people who like to, 
to have classifications and that might be a problem. I don't know where, where to put it. But um, I think, um, as I say at the beginning, I have this love for Canela because it was the project where I was able to apply all the knowledge that I learned uh, through my through my curve uh, from being uh, a student and then being a professional. Because um, at uh, KBK in Type Media, we also learn uh, some or we practice some stone carving. And I think by accident, I was able to apply some of this feeling, not exactly what the chisel does, but I was able to apply this uh, unconscious and, and to bring it into, into Canela. So, for the next months uh, after the release, uh, I think uh, second issue of uh, 2015 from document, it was used uh, as the main display phase uh, while I finished everything. Um, once it was released in October uh, 2016, something funny happened because um, New York Magazine was working in this special issue for Barack Obama, and they chose uh, Canela for um, for uh, the typeface uh, display typeface for the whole uh, for the whole issue. Actually, I think in this one Barack Obama was invited as uh, editor of the magazine. And uh, the funny thing about it is, uh, or the curious thing about it is, like at the same month. Uh, while it was doing an issue also about him. And also, they choose Canela as the primary uh, typeface for the, for the voice of Barack Obama. So it just happened to be like super funny that two, two companies that they didn't know because they kind of hide the information about what's going to be the next issue were kind of taking the same decision. And Canela, to them, it was the voice of of Barack. So, Canela, it, um, as you've seen, it's been just display. Uh, and uh, those, ex those examples that I'm, uh, these examples that I'm showing, uh, it's just the display phase. Uh, we didn't have any expectations about Canela, what's going to happen with Canela. So, when I plan it, okay, this is just Canela, it's going to be six weights with italics, and that's it. But Canela kind of uh, started uh, becoming a little bit um, famous, and um, and we noticed uh, through the use of people, uh, we started working with uh, with the cut in uh, 2017. Uh, they were redesigning uh, redesigning uh, its website, and uh, they were using Canela in kind of a, a small full quotes or also titles, but they weren't uh, big enough to Canela work well. But at the moment, that was it. That's all I have. So they went for Canela and they used it on that way. So we noticed that people wanted to use Canela in smaller sizes. And uh, I needed to do something about it. So basically, all those examples, you see it's uh, used um, on display. Um, they use it as a brand. Uh, it's been used uh, for photography, uh, for fashion uh, brands, uh, for malls, uh, posters, um, bedding, uh, documentaries. Looking and trying to find examples of how Canela has been used, it, it just brought something really funny. Uh, there is the conception of what you do, what did you do, and uh, how do you explain what you have done, and there is explanations from people about your work. And uh, this thing has been super funny about it, and we talk about it in the studio, because it seems when people know that I'm Mexican, just because they know that I'm Mexican, everything that I do is Mexican. But even I don't know what's Mexican in type design. So. It's funny because I read, um, I think um, this is coming from Fonty News, so they have explanations about uh, 
the projects and, and this is done by people who want to submit things and they will write about it. It's funny because the next slide is wrote from the same person, but he's talking about the 70s Mexican funk uh, that I put on Canela and I never thought about it on my process. I never thought, oh, this is going to be coming from the 70s and the funk. But uh, on the next one, he said this is coming from the 80s also. So once is the 70s, one is the 80s. Uh, he's not talking, uh, he's talking about also being funky. And uh, I don't know, uh, he just started calling the Mexican Castlon. I don't know if Canela or Miguel or uh, I don't know. It's just funny, it's just funny that these things happen. And uh, I have another example of this also, like um, just uh, American, Latin American Caslon, Mexican Caslon. So it's funny, uh, I did this project for, um, for one of the biggest newspapers in, in Italy, La Repubblica, and we were start just kidding about it with people know that it was a Mexican, they're gonna say it was a, the Mexican Bodoni. No, so every time when I do something, it's gonna be Mexican. Uh, I don't know if you remember this. So after that, I just start wondering how I'm gonna look if I if I just get into the into the clothes. So the Mexican castle on first. So after this, and uh, Canela just became in a collection. Basically, it's been taken also the last four years of my life, not full time, because at the same time I need to do custom job and everything, so I think that's why it's been taking this long. Because now when I'm here and I see what do you do with uh, other scripts that are not uh, Latin, I just feel bad about it, like spending four years of my life to teach just Latin, so I don't have anything else. So, it seems a little bit <laughs> stupid, but um, Canela just became in, in a collection. First, uh, we never call it uh, Canela display, so we just leave it in Canela, because we talk a little bit, okay, what will happen if people ask about something else, maybe the family will grow. The people didn't ask exactly like that, but we saw it like people was using it maybe wrong, like too small. So it's like, okay, maybe we're gonna need a canela text. We can get a canela deck, like medium sizes. And the last thing, it was canela condensed. Um, this was done uh, this year uh, from canela text. Um, it's designed to keep the same elegance as, as the display one, but just to work in, in smaller sizes. Uh, around like 20 points because it's also not like super good for eight points. So it's a still kind of a pretty typeface that can work in a small sizes, but not too small, short text. And it includes all the standard typographic toolkit, like um, small caps, uh, tabular figures, fractions. And the other thing is that we have two regular uh, colors. We have Canela, Canela regular one and Canela regular two. So this can work for uh, different tastes. People sometimes like to have uh, regular uh, typefaces that are a bit darker. And also it works better when it's in coated or uncoated paper. So we did this uh, in addition to the, to the regular weights that we have, that they were six, it was thin. Uh, light, thin, regular, medium, um, bold, and black. And uh, in the text we have the regular number two. So basically the, um, the difference between Canela, Canela display and Canela text is uh, changing the size of the XI a little bit to make it uh, bigger to work better in the, in the small size. Um, opening the, the spacing, uh, making the things uh, thicker, uh, things that you will expect, 
that a typeface for small sizes will do. But you see also the difference between the thick, uh, the thins and thin, uh, thins between one and the other one. They are not too big, so it's also that's also why it doesn't work well in really small sizes. Uh, so the next one is uh, Canela Deck. But basically, this is the one that is optimized uh, for the web because it does the same as the display one, but because the, the titles on, on the web are smaller when, than when it's printed, it works better there. Uh, I'm going to put an example that is not, is not happening because when the cut designed the website, we didn't have a still uh, Canela deck and Canela text. So they were using just canela. And uh, I made an, an exercise that what will happen if, uh, if we will just change it for the deck version. It will get more robust. It will work better for there, even though it's not helping the projector here. But uh, this is uh, why we did it. This is why I did uh, the typeface. So you, you can get better tools. And the last part uh, is Canela Condense. Uh, this was kind of a petition uh, from a traveler that at the end uh, didn't happen because um, the design director left also. But I started working on, 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 the, on the project. And uh, basically, it's inspired uh, by American book covers from the 70s. And, uh, Sometimes when we condense a typeface, uh, there is an aggressive edge when it's a serif typeface. It could disrupt completely from the original um, design. So I try to keep still the, the subtle curves of the, of the form, of the round forms from coming from the display one and uh, exaggerating the vertical lines. So basically, that's what I did, and it's coming uh, from some uh, some um, covers and or typefaces uh, from from the 70s. And here are some examples, so you can have a look of it. And then I I just make a fake cover of the last one. So this is this is how it looks. Uh, Canela uh, is this is fresh. Is uh, we just released it um, maybe a, a month ago. And uh, the italic has a, a gentle angle. So I try not to, to have it uh, too, too slanted. So it will work well with, the, with this new version. So basically, that's it I, I have to share. Thank you. Sorry, because uh, I get nervous. I think this second time I, I did uh, English lecture. So it just, I get nervous about it. Thank you.